Hey everyone, it's Bethany. We are already on week three of crafting for Christmas. I hope you enjoyed week one and two. We have been having so much fun and I really love all of the things that I have been creating on my craft table. So I hope you have been enjoying them as well. In this video, we are gonna continue crafting for Christmas. I have a variety of really fun crafts and I'm really excited to show you all of the new ideas that I'm gonna be bringing to my craft table for this video. If you missed the first two videos, be sure to rewind and go watch those because they turned out so fun and pretty. I know you've been loving those and I am excited to bring you a third video for Christmas crafts. Next week is my huge video on all of the gifts I'm going to be making for others for Christmas. I have a lot and last year's video was so, so popular. So I decided to redo that video and do a new fresh one for 2022. So if you're brand new and just joining for the first time for this video, be sure to subscribe because next week we're going to be doing a huge video and it's going to be chocked full of inspiration on how you can gift give with your Cricut. Let's go ahead and get started. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you're ready. Be sure to reference that description box below this video for all of the materials and tools that I'm using in this video. I can't wait to inspire you. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our final video of Christmas crafting. Now, next week I'm going to be doing my really popular video that's all about all of the presents that I'm going to be making in my craft room. So stay tuned for that, but we are going to finish up some of our Christmas crafts in this video. So I'm going to start out with this really, really pretty sign. I have used this before. And when I was at Hobby Lobby last week, I saw it and picked it up again because I love this sign. I think it's so classy and beautiful. It is called whitewash sign with wood beads. It's in the woodworking section or the wood section of Hobby Lobby. And I just think it is gorgeous. So what I did was I cut out a really pretty design and I decided to cut it out in a really pretty red. And I love this red because it's, it's more like a, like a fire engine red, right? I feel like I'm really picky about my red. I don't want it to be too bright. I really like more of this nice dark red. So it's kind of like a cranberry, if you will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start weeding this out, but as a reminder, I'll link all of the designs that I'm using down in the description box below this video, as well as any materials. I tend not to link Hobby Lobby things because quite honestly, I think it's kind of hard to find things on their website. So I just let you know where those are from. So there is our little piece and there we go, okay. This is a stunning, whoops, stunning design. I'm excited for you to see it. I have had this kind of saved in my favorites for a while, just waiting for the right project to put it on. And when I saw this really pretty sign once again at Hobby Lobby, I decided to rebuy it. I think the other one, I, I think it was last it last Thanksgiving I think it was that I purchased this sign and I did something really pretty about friends and family on it it was a really pretty decor but then I just loved it so much that I rebought it so I could make some Christmas decor out of it okay I'm going through and weeding out all of the little middle pieces isn't this beautiful? It says, we wish you a Merry Christmas, but it's just the styling of it is so pretty and simple. And I thought the, it was the perfect, excuse me, it was just the perfect shape for this pretty sign that I purchased. So when I saw the sign, I was really giddy because I knew that I really wanted to use this design for a while now. And I can't wait to see how this turns out. So one question I really wanted to ask tonight was, what is on your Christmas list? Can be a craft item that you have been wanting, but let me know, what are you asking Santa for? I'm actually asking for a photo printer. I really want one. Do you remember when I, when I mentioned that I never saw myself scrapbooking really again? Well, I have this idea and I mentioned it over on my Instagram. If you're not following me over there, be sure to follow me over there. We're having some fun doing some chatting and brainstorming about some fun things. I'll link my Instagram in the description box, but it's just the same, the same name that's here, Bethadilly. 
So go ahead and follow me over there for some more crafty fun. But I recently in my Q&A was, was saying I probably would never do scrapbooking again, but I, I'm thinking of a photo project that I really want to complete. And so I'm asking for a photo printer. That way I can just have the freedom of printing just small things here and there, not having to order every time I want just a photo or two. So I'm excited, but I'd love to hear what you're asking for. It's always fun to hear what everybody is wishing for. Okay, so I am grabbing some transfer tape and I'm actually starting with one of my larger projects this evening and I'll tell you why. I I really like to, whoop, it stuck to my scissors. Look at that, my goodness. Okay, sorry for the noise, but I like to start with my largest project because I like to reuse transfer tape. So if you start with your biggest project, then what you can do is keep reusing your transfer tape or trim it down to size for your smaller projects. And it just helps keep your crafting costs down. So if you're doing some marathon crafting, start with your bigger projects. That way, once you have your original piece of transfer tape, then you have a big little canvas to kind of keep trimming off to reuse. So quick tip of the Christmas crafting night. So what I'm going to do is, oops, too soon on that. I'm going to just take a little inch and expose it. There we go. An inch, inch and a half. There we go. And I'll start laying that down. Instead of just revealing all of it at once, I find it easier just to lay down a little portion and then lay it down all in one fell swoop right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take my scraper, make sure I don't have any bubbles. I think I have a little one here, but gone already. I'm going to scrape this down. Isn't this pretty? I think it's just gorgeous. Okay. And let me turn and burnish the back as well. I think I've had this vinyl since I got my Cricut three years ago. Was it three years ago? three and a half years ago ish and so I need to use it <laughs> and don't ask me about shelf life of vinyl because I'm not really sure I go through my craft supplies pretty quickly so I've never really come into you know the need to worry about that but I kind of feel like I am I'm needing to use this okay let's bring all of this in isn't this pretty I love a nice natural bead you know me, I love the natural wood paired with the white. It's just so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna peel away. I'm gonna go slow, just in case, like that little eye, we have any troublesome areas, but it looks like it's doing pretty well. And we got stuck right here. close to the finish line. There we go. Okay. Now you can use parchment paper if you'd like to help get this centered. But I am going to just eyeball it. Okay. So I'm thinking over to the right a little bit, up a little bit, and that right there, I have to say, looks great. So, final answer. I'm going to start in the middle and then kind of go towards the edges. Okay, and then I'll bring in my scraper. Isn't that pretty? Obsessed. I think that is so pretty. Beautiful, beautiful first craft of the evening. I love it. Okay. Last little bit and grab the little corner. Now I have to admit, you know me, I do my best to do a variety of craft supplies and craft types in my videos. I try to just do a little bit of everything, but tonight we are focusing on adhesive vinyl. Can you believe? We are just gonna focus 
on adhesive vinyl crafts. It just, that's the way it worked out. Usually I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I will say the last craft tonight, we are going to do some sublimation and it's gonna be a photo ornament. I'm so excited. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. But until then, we're going to do adhesive vinyl. Isn't that pretty? Now I did notice really quickly that the middle of my R, I'm gonna do this really quick before that vinyl kind of sets. The middle of my R needs to be weeded out just like that. Okay, good thing I caught that. And we are all done. Look how cute that is. Isn't that pretty? I love that nice dark red against the white. I think it's just gorgeous. I think this is so pretty. Beautiful first craft to kick off all of our Christmas crafts this evening. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next craft idea. Okay, I, again, was at Hobby Lobby. I don't get to go to Hobby Lobby often because I just am a busy, busy mama. So I was able to go and have a really nice Christmas shopping experience at other stores and I ended up taking myself to Hobby Lobby. I just took an afternoon to myself. I actually had lunch by myself. It was lovely. Any mama knows, my goodness, lunch to yourself and browsing a couple stores on your own. I have to admit, I bought myself three pairs of shoes. I don't know the last time I bought myself a single pair of shoes and I came home so refreshed. It was just lovely, but I am just going away from my story here. I found at Hobby Lobby, just like the last little blank, this really cute rotating sign. And I instantly snatched it because I thought this would be so cute for Christmas. And I, as you can tell, I'm going to write naughty on one side and nice on the other. I thought this would be so cute for, you know, how's our day going, right? Santa is watching. This is so cute. So I kept this little tag. This is again in that little bare wood section. It says wood sign with black metal stand. I mean, Hobby Lobby is so literal with <laughs> their tags. They are so literal. So this is so pretty. Originally I was thinking about painting it, but I just love a bare wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that bigger piece of transfer tape once again. And I think what I'll do actually is do them one at a time. That way I can re reuse my transfer tape over and over. But I'm gonna lay that whole piece down just like that. Then I can trim just like that. And we still have lots of transfer tape to use. Plus we can reuse this piece a few more times. Okay, here we go. Also, I will link this font down below. I went crazy the other day buying new fonts because they were having some fun little sales and I just thought, you know, it's a great time to stock up on some fonts. So I found so many new favorites. I'll link this one down below because I have a feeling that I will be using this over and over again. How cute is this? So I'm gonna do naughty on this side doesn't matter which side and i think that looks nice and straight like so pretty okay scrape that down okay and then gently peel this up how cute though right Keep that little g there we go then we'll grab the nice just like this, flip and we'll do the other side. I thought this would be so fun to have just in our home, be a fun little, just fun thing. You know, it takes a long time for Christmas to get here and we don't put up our tree until the day after Thanksgiving. And even doing that, I feel like the children are constantly asking if tomorrow is Christmas. So I like to bring in little fun things just to help pass the time and keep the season really, really fun, right? Because it, it seems like eternity until Christmas comes. Okay, here is the other side. Again, font information will be down below. This is one you are going to want to add to your your little list because it's amazing. Okay, look at that. Nice and naughty. 
same font. I did end up making this bigger because I thought it would just be too small you know, the nice at this same size. And honestly, you're never going to see them together. So I wasn't really nervous about consistency. I thought it was really more important that they looked nice independently of one another, but I thought that's cute. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. Okay, this next one, I decided, I picked this up at Target. How cute is this? It was $5 in their little bullseye playground, which is their kind of dollar spot, though their dollar spot is either $1, $3, or $5, and this was five. I really liked the nice red embellishment of the rim there. I thought it was so pretty, and I usually do like a plate or a placemat for Santa to put cookies on, but I thought this year we are doing a cake stand because this is so cute and I have to decorate it. So I'm going to use that same red and again, a brand new font. I stocked up on a bunch of new fonts and I thought this was super, super fun yet simple. And it just was perfect for this this really cute project. So make sure that one goes down. This just simply says cookies for Santa. Now it's a good time to remind you vinyl is not food safe. Okay. So you don't want to put food on it. When you're making mugs, you don't want to put your vinyl in an area that someone's going to sip. So what I did was I decided to curve the vinyl around the lip and then we'll just put our cookies elsewhere. So just a reminder, food is, or vinyl is not food safe. So you don't want your food coming into contact with it. But I think for this little project, this is perfectly fine. Our cookies won't touch the vinyl and it's gonna be a wonderful night. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some new transfer tape. Now I wanted to show you this. I don't know if you can really see how gummy that is. It's kind of hard to see, but sometimes when you put it there you go. When you put it on a bare wood, sometimes it gets all just filmy and I don't know, just gets a residue on it. So that's when I toss it because it just starts losing its stickiness. So I'll grab a new piece and that's why you'll see me bringing in a little bit more from this big piece. In fact, you know, I, I think I may have planned this a little bit out of order because I have a, another big project coming up in this video, but that's okay. I'm always saving here and there so that sometimes, you know, if we waste some, it's just the nature of crafting sometimes. Okay, scraping this down. Now, before I peel this off, of course, I'm going to turn this over, do this side. I'm going to get some rubbing alcohol and just clean the surface because I can already feel there's a just a dusty film on it. Okay, so taking some rubbing alcohol that I have, just in a little spray bottle here, and there we go. I'm just gonna spray this right on there. I need to refill that up. And this removes just dust, oils, anything that could be on the surface from either sitting at the store or from being handled by yourself. Just helps give you a nice clean surface to help your vinyl be successful with both laying down and lasting. Okay, so let's peel this off. Whoops. Okay, go slow, Bethany. Go slow. I say that and then I start peeling faster and faster. I just have quite the list tonight. I really want to show you everything. I'm so excited. Okay, here is my cookie stand. How cute. Or cake stand, but in my case, it's a cookie stand. How gosh darn darling is that? Oh my goodness. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this over because it's gonna kind of misalign if I do not go trim my transfer tape. So I'm just going to take the curve of the text, trim as close as I can without obviously coming into contact with my darling words. I don't wanna trim my vinyl, but there we go. Now I can align it really nice. Like that. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to take my time with that. Okay. And 
stuff like this you would want to hand wash only just to help the vinyl last of course it does say permanent vinyl but even permanent vinyl it's recommended that you hand wash only and if you're putting this on a mug then you'd also want to avoid the um, microwave so just some care instructions for you there we are look how cute that is that is darling so as I mentioned, I'll just be placing our cookies up here. They're not gonna come into contact with the vinyl and all will be good. But I think that is the most darling thing ever. I think it's so cute. Now, on my channel, well, it may have been, maybe not last year, but the year before, I did a Santa placemat, which was so cute. And it's really, really wonderful because if you don't wanna store a bulky item like this in your Christmas decor, then a placemat you can just fold away and it just, it's mere inches, not even inches. It's not even inches, it's so tiny, it's a placemat. So if you want inspiration for that, I'll link the tutorial up in the corner here for you because that is just darling. I love that as well, but I wanna, you know, I love just to change it up every once in a while. And this little cake stand could not stay at Target. It had to come home with me and look, transformation, so cute. Okay, once again, Hobby Lobby. I probably should name this video. Bethany went to Hobby Lobby and was so inspired, but I found this really pretty photo frame that it's kind of like a snow globe, right? Isn't that so cute? You can put your little photo in there and then you have fun little just snow everywhere. So it was in just, it says Christmas 2022. It was just in the the Christmas area, but it's called DIY Photo Snow Frame, and it's in the size of four by six. Really quickly, I'm going to take my rubbing alcohol and just clean it off. But what I love to do is I love to showcase a photo of my kids during Christmas time, and I have a favorite that I took last year. And you never know which year you're gonna have your favorite picture. You never know which year, what you're gonna get, right? But I got, well, it was the first year of all three kids because our little one had his first Christmas last year. And I got a really pretty, pretty picture of the kids. So the picture that I got was portrait. So you could either do landscape or portrait, but I already know what picture I wanna put in here. So I'm going to do portrait. And what I did was I took some, I took two of my favorite fonts. Again, down below, you'll find all of the font information. And I did one font for Holly, jolly and then i did another font for the and because i just love this little ampersand i hope i said that right i think i think so anyway so i thought that pairing those together looked so pretty i just loved that so why are my lights getting so dark all of a sudden my craft room is tired i have been working non-stop for christmas content so there it goes it's brightening back up i'm not sure why i did that okay bringing back in my transfer tape that I just used on our little cookie tray. Okay, and I always believe less is more, so I'm gonna trim this down because if I were to use all of that, it, it would just, it would not help me align very well. Now you may be better at it than I am, and if you are, then yay, but I find that if I have my transfer tape roughly the size of my design, I am much more successful, so. Burnishing the front, burnishing the back, and I'm just going to bottom, oops, let me do this side. I'm gonna bottom right justify this adorable little sentiment. And sorry if you hear any sweet coughing in the background, my little kiddo is getting over a little cold. The colds have been endless this season for my family. My goodness. But luckily we are very healthy. Okay, so I'm gonna do that just like that. Now, I wanna make sure that it's not, you know, um, I, I bottom right justify it for many reasons, right? One, because just design-wise it's so pretty, but another reason is because their faces are mainly going to be here, so I don't want to cover any cutie pie faces, right? Okay, so I'll get that photo in there and it will be a really fun little piece of Christmas decor. And you know, you could change this out every year. You could, one thing that would be a fun idea is put the annuals, if you visit Santa Claus, you know, and you go and 
sit on Santa's lap and ask for your present for the year, then you could put that annual photo in here. Or you could just do a photo, mine's a photo of them in front of the tree, which is so pretty. But I love that. I think that is so cute. This would make for a very, very nice gift as well. But it's just so magical and fun, and I love how that turned out. Okay, so I, again, was at Target, and I was in that little bullseye playground. This was a $5 item. This was, let's see... Oh gosh, ornament board. It's called ornament board. I thought it was so cute and I found a very cute design that I wanted to use on it. So I thought this would be just a fun piece of decor. Now this isn't something I'm going to be putting food on or anything. So I'm going to apply some vinyl wherever I'd like. It'll be something that I just prop up in the kitchen and I think it'll be really cute. So I'm gonna take my time because this design is made up of some smaller and thinner pieces, but I think it's gonna be completely gorgeous. Whoops, which side does that go? I have to do a little, there we go. A little mending. Those little berries are a tad tiny. So I'm just gonna take my time and make sure that I don't pull up any that are intended to stay down. So there's another one. So how's everybody doing on their Christmas crafting? Are you doing decor crafts or are you crafting for under the tree, right? Are you making the Christmas presents? I'm sure you are. Let's see, I think this video is going out December 10th. I have a big calendar of all the videos that I'm making. It's currently November, last day of November. So I'm doing good about 10 days ahead of schedule my content so by the time you watch this video i'm hopefully having a little crafty vacation and just enjoying the season of being present i love doing all of my work early so that i can just really enjoy this time with the little kiddos and my family i just it's important so I work my little tail off for most of November, most of fall, <laughs> and it looks like I'm working, but really in December I am just enjoying time. Enjoying time off. Okay. I'm almost getting there. Here we go. Oops, I think I left a couple berries. Okay, a little surgery to get one of the little berries. Placed right back on there. Okay, hunting through for all of my middle pieces, but isn't this a cute design? I thought this was so sweet. And I really, really think it's going to be pretty on this ornament tray or ornament sign. I think it'll be just the right, um, how do I wanna say? I think it's the right shape for it, right? Because we have a little wider area here, wider area here. And then we have, you know, a little bit of, um, curved design on the top and bottom that I think will take the shape of this ornament very nicely. At least I'm hoping so. I will see it for the first time when you do. And I don't know. Happy thoughts. Happy positive thoughts. I think it's going to look really nice. Okay. There we go. And middles. Middles. Another fun idea is you could personalize this with a family name on it, and this would make a really fun holiday gift. I just think that would be so nice. I love that, you know, two crafters, three crafters could all take the same item, right? They could take the same blank and could run with it in a completely different direction. That's just the beauty of crafting. There's just so many ideas. You have a blank canvas and you can run in any way that you see yourself most inspired, which is just lovely. Okay, grabbing all these little pieces that are going to stick to me forever. And let's get this laid down. I think I have all my little pieces. Okay, that looks great. So using that transfer tape, we're reusing. See how that works? We're still reusing. It's wonderful. And then we'll trim down. That way we save some transfer tape, but also it's easier on our eye when placing. Okay, we'll go front and back as always. And let's get this placed on this pretty wood piece. 
Okay, here we go. And being mindful of those berries. There we go. And I have a little vinyl piece here that I need to take off. Oh, perfect. Maybe a couple pieces that, just those little straggler pieces that come off and then stick. There we go. Okay. Then, oh, it looks, oh, it's going to look so good. <laughs> I wanted to say it looks good, like it was finished, but it's going to look good. It's not quite finished yet. Okay, I think that looks really good. Maybe down a little placement side to side looks great. And final answer. Oh my. Oh my. That is so pretty. Sorry for the honest reactions, but you know, you can't hide how fun crafting is sometimes. I'm just thrilled to pieces when I'm crafting. It's my happy place. Oh, this looks so good. Okay, I'm going to take my time and really burnish that down. Make sure it all lays down nice. And then, oh goodness, this might be a tricky one to get laid down. Let's see. Sometimes you do come across blanks that are just a tad harder to put vinyl on. Now, because this is something that I'm just going to place vinyl on and then, you know, set set up and enjoy, I'm not gonna, obviously it's not gonna come into co contact with water or anything, then I will just take my time and not worry too much about it. But let me get this, let me get this all laid down. Oh, it's gonna be a stinker. I'm gonna fast forward, but just know, if you wanna recreate this, it's gonna take you a minute or two. Okay, oh my goodness, I think you can see that, you know, this is something that's probably not going to stand the test of time, so no need to repeat that in the comment section a million times. We all saw it. It was a little crazy, but you know what? It's something that's just going to sit. It's not going to be getting wet in any or anything, so I feel like, you know, we just enjoy the sign, but also... I'm going to put these berries on because why not? Um, also, I'm going to leave it in the video because I feel like it's a relatable moment. I feel like we've all been there with a blank and we're like, why in the world is this vinyl not sticking like I want it to? Because we've all been there, right? And I think sometimes it probably, usually for me, it's, it's either plastic or wood. And I think it just has to do with the coating that's on it. So... I can't be 100% certain, but that's what makes sense to me. So again, and I'll repeat this just so that I don't get a million comments about it. Um, we know that this isn't going to last generations. What does anymore, right? But I think we can finish this project and at least enjoy it for the time we have with it. <laughs> right? It's way too cute to stop now. It's just gonna sit in the kitchen, propped up against the little coffee area. It's gonna be adorable as heck. And I'll enjoy it because I'll know that I put a little sweat into it, right? And you know, you might say you win some, you lose some, but in this case, I still think we won. So cute, I love it. And for its purpose, I think it's going to be awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next little craft. Okay, I did not plan it this way, but I think it's safe to say that I earned myself a glass of wine 
after that last craft. So I'm gonna make myself a cute little wine glass. I actually already had this on the list because my husband and I, we make, well, my husband does. He makes a really good, it's a family recipe, um, a Bailey's Irish cream every year. And it's so good. So I wanted to have a cute little mug to sip it out of or sip a little red wine out of. And I found the cutest little design that I thought would be so cute on this little holiday wine glass. So it says, okay, it says pour, pour me some holiday cheer. And I thought that was so cute. So, so cute because you know, anything that makes you cheerful during the holidays, maybe it's a little sparkling cider. Maybe it is a glass of milk to wash down some yummy Christmas cookies, whatever that holiday cheer is. This is gonna be a cute little mug for it. So let me get this all weighted and I'll link the design down below. I loved it, I loved the font. Of course, I don't have font information because this is an SVG, but I just thought it was so cute. Okay, so I have to admit another reason why I am recording so much content in November for December is because my craft room is going to be under construction for a while in December. Some exciting things are going to be happening, especially to this area. I'm so excited. Everything just arrived today. It is going to be amazing. So I'll be sharing more about that. Well, I'll probably be sharing a lot about the construction over on Instagram. So follow me over there. I'll probably do some real live updates on how it's going, but I'm excited. It's going to be so, so fun. I'll be, I'll be doing, let's just say I'll be doing a whole new craft room tour in 2023. Okay. And I did, yes, I did put rubbing alcohol on my glass. Now, as a reminder, we talked about this before, but as a reminder for drinkware, you want to be mindful of where you put the vinyl. Vinyl isn't food safe once again, so you don't want to to come into contact with your lips. So you'll just want to be mindful of that when you are figuring out your vinyl placement and also sizing your design. Also, 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 hand washing is recommended. Avoiding the microwave is recommended. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm going to do some relief cuts just because I have a straight item here, but I have a curved surface where I'm going to be placing this. So I'm just going to do a little bit of short, but thoughtful relief cutting around my design, being careful not to cut into my vinyl, but this will just help that flat transfer tape, take the curve of the glass and it will lay it down a little bit more successfully. Okay. At least we'll hope so. Okay. Now, oh, I always do this with glasses too. Always get one little sticky spot. Oh, and it's that rubbing alcohol too that, oops, I lost any. Okay. Hold on. It's that rubbing alcohol too that really helps it kind of cling real quick. Let me grab that E have to redo it there. Oh, she wants to stay on there. Come here. That's not where you need to go. Okay. I'm going to bring it down a little bit just to give my lip some room to sip. I think there looks good. So it's going to go a little lower on the glass, but it's following the rules of giving us some room to sip and I'm just going to go in little sections, right? Kind of focusing on each word at a time to make sure it lays down really nice. And then the bottom takes on the most of the most curve of the glass is what I'm trying to say. So it kind of, it kind of wants to go down letter by letter. Whoops. Doing a little magic trick with my weeding tool. Okay going to kind of help nudge it in the right direction. Come here. 
convince it to lay down where it should. Oh, I am so sorry. All of that was so blurry because my head was in the way. My apologies. I'm not perfect. Okay. There we go. But, you know, sometimes it's not perfect on camera because I want it to turn out perfect in real life. Not perfect, I know. Not perfect, but I want it to be a successful project. Okay, that is so cute. And I think it all, whoops, we lost the name. Spoke too soon. We'll do a surgery in a second. Sometimes you just set it to the side and you just let it. Okay, grabbing a little tweezer and we'll just manually place this little C down because we need the C for the cheer. Okay, so visually placing that there. Perfect. Pour me some holiday cheer. Okay, between this one and the last craft, I've earned some holiday cheer, right? Okay, definitely going to be using this a lot this holiday season. I love, love how that turned out. Also a very good and very cute little Christmas gift for someone. So here's a little gift inspiration as well. Okay, mid craft night cleanup for just a moment. That way we can keep it nice and clean in here. And let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. So I've had this acrylic sign in my craft room for a very long time. I believe it is eight inches by nine inches, but half craft mat can measure eight inches by nine inches. And what I did was I took some chalk paint, which I'll link down below, and I put it on the back side. So just like in the previous video where we did the acrylic ornament, I flipped over the acrylic piece, placed the chalk paint on the back. I did two coats and I just used a foam brush. That's how I prefer to do it. And I think that looks really neat. Not worrying about clean edges. I like that kind of organic and natural look. But now we're we're going to again we have the chalk paint on this side rough right smooth on this side because now we're going to be placing our vinyl on the acrylic side so I have a cute little design again font information will be linked down below I also did get this acrylic piece at Michael's and I want to say at least a year to two years ago but you probably can find something similar to this anywhere. Michaels may still have it. I've just had it for so long because I wasn't quite inspired with how to use it. But once the holidays come around, I feel like very often I am inspired with some things that have been sitting in my craft room in different ways, just because I think the holidays just give a fresh look on a variety of different things. So we tend to, well, I can't speak for everyone, but I tend to end up using a lot of the things that I have during the holidays. So plus it's a gift giving time of the year. So it's nice to have a variety of little things that you can personalize, decorate. Okay. So let me go ahead and weed this out. Intricate thin design. So I'm going to take my time. Even though you just watched me struggle weeding that vinyl, just because it's intricate, no, nothing really other than that, just thin little pieces. But I feel like if I put anything to some holly jolly Christmas music, it just, it, everybody can stay happy, right? <laughs> In fact, I really wish that I could listen to it while I'm doing it because it would probably keep me, keep me a little calm. But when in doubt, put some Christmas jingles on and... Everything just stays holly and jolly in the craft space. 
Okay, so this design says Old Fashioned Candy Canes, Kringle Company, and I thought this was so cute. Plus, of course, the shape of it works so well for this little sign that I want to make, and I thought this would be so pretty on this nice, more of a mint color backdrop. I really love this color for Christmas time. I think it's so pretty. So let's grab transfer tape and apply it to our sign. Okay, turning this over, peeling away. Being careful about those intricate pieces and ready to go. Okay, and that is why I use this vinyl over and over again because it is just amazing. Okay, let's lay, lay this down. I think I have, I thought I saw a little vinyl piece. Oh, there it is. Oh, is it on the front or the back? Oh, it might be on the front. Okay. It's on the front. We're not going to worry about it. We can grab it later. Okay. So I'm going to take this, put this here, get that out of the way. Oh goodness. This is going to be so cute. So cute. Okay. I'm trying to, sorry. You're like, lay it down already, please. I'm feeling the same way, but I want to just make sure it's nice and straight. And there we go. Oh, I might have gotten it a little bit to the right, but I think it's still super cute. Oh, that's fun. Uh, yes, definitely a tad to the right, but you know, it's fun. And I could add a little bit more paint there and it would look just fine. So cute. Okay, peeling this off. And then we have our super cute sign. Oh, old fat, oh, way to the right. But you know what? It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be so fine and so cute. I love that. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay, so using that same paint, I had this really fun, a DIY wood ornament. I purchased this last year at Michael's. I decided to just paint the surface of it because I thought it would look nice with the bare wood on the side, but that is personal preference. But I painted that. I actually had an idea for these snowflakes for an entirely different project that just did not pan out. And I didn't want to waste these little snowflakes. Plus I really wanted to use this cute little blank this year because again, I've had it for a year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put cute little snowflakes right over this little tree and I think it's going to be super fun. So I'm going to go about three at a time and I want to do, oops, I guess I didn't get one of each design, which is fine. We'll just burnish these down and I thought it'd be cute just to put snowflakes all over this little tree and it would be a cute little ornament that you know, we're always kind of searching for ways to decorate without words on everything. So, just gotta keep this little guy over here. So here is an idea for doing so. Let me grab this little piece of snowflake. And it was also just a great way for me to still use this little vinyl piece of snowflakes I had cut out. And get inspired in a new way because sometimes that happens right okay I'm gonna trim these apart so I can lay them down individually and I will admit that my idea here is to kind of go off the side so we'll do one there and then I'll remedy you know the overlap in just a moment and then we'll do one here and maybe that one will be completely on so that one we can just peel up. Very cute. Okay. And then let's see. Oops, did I lose another one? That's okay. We have plenty of snowflakes. Let's grab this little one. This is different. So these snowflakes are just a Cricut Design Space snowflake. I just typed in snowflake and clicked free so I could look at the free designs only. And I guess I don't want to do too, too many on here. I want to keep it pretty simple. Not too, too busy. But I wanted to decorate it really nicely. Okay, we'll come back to this one to give a variety of design. And I think we'll have this one kind of coming off the side again. 
And honestly, I think we'll do one more for a total of five, and I think that will be enough. I think it'll be pretty. Okay, so let's do this. And we'll do this little guy right here. Okay. Plus we'll have some extra snowflakes for another project. Be just fine. Okay. Peel this one off. Oops. One little piece. There we go. And I think we'll do something like that. Well, oh, let's do that. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm going to grab a self-healing mat because I do not like to cut on this surface. And I know some people say absolutely go for it. Other people say do not. So I, I'm going with my gut and just... I like to travel the safe road. That's just, you know, that's completely my personality. So I'm going to grab a self-healing mat because I have one. Why not use it? And turn this over. I'll grab a true control knife. I will let's see if I can remove this sticker. And this would be a really cute ornament to give as a gift. That didn't come off very gracefully, did it? Um, but it also, also would be very cute to put on... A gift bag as well. Okay, so I'm just slicing the vinyl just so that wherever it hangs off, we can just trim it off. That little piece it just cleans it up so nice, makes it look so intentional. And then one last piece here. like that and I'll probably peel from this side just like that oh very nice I think that's really fun simple fun Again, you could use it as a little bag tag. You can add words or personalization on here, but here's an idea of a little design that you could do for Christmas that does not have a bunch of verbiage on it. So I love how that turned out. I think it's so sweet. I love the paint color. I think it's a great way to use a little blank like this. And it was a happy accident because my original idea didn't really pan out, which behind the scenes, that is what happens as crafters, right? We think of one thing and it doesn't quite work. So we reuse the design on something else and that's what we call a happy accident. Okay, we're on the last two crafts. If you're still watching, be sure to leave the little Santa emoji. He is my favorite. That's my favorite emoji to use during the holiday season. In fact, he's all over my Instagram on all of my little, little um, content descriptions. I always sneak a little Santa Claus into the back. So I am using this really neat tray. It's called a long riser from Target in that little dollar section. But again, this was $5. I loved the iron legs to that or faux iron legs. I thought they were so pretty. And this, if any design, if any design has been saved forever and ever in my cart to use and in my favorites, it's this one. And I am so thrilled to use it this year. In fact, when I saw this long riser, I instantly thought of this design and it's coming, it's coming to life this year. I'm so excited. So this is a very beautiful design that says Merry Christmas. Again, I don't have the font information because this is a pre-made SVG, but I'll link it down below for you in case you'd like to purchase it yourself. But isn't it beautiful? In fact, if you know of a font that's like this, will you please let me know in the comment section? Because I would write everything in this font if I had this font. It's just gorgeous. Okay, because this is our last vinyl craft, I am going to kind of piece together some transfer tape just to save some materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some transfer tape here. I'm going to grab my scissors. Trim. And if you overlap your transfer tape, right, you can layer it and keep it all one piece. Now, a little bit of the tail of my M is off, but 
I'm personally fine with that just because I know that I'll be able to still do it. But if for some reason that bothers you, make sure you just stick a little piece just like so. I could use one of these little pieces from the little snowflakes, right? Trim off this little snowflake piece and you can just mend. So if you don't have a huge piece of transfer tape, you can do, you know, little pieces as long as they interlock, right? Not interlock, that's not really the right term, but as long as they overlap and all connect as one, you're golden. So quick tip number two tonight. We're just getting hopefully a little helpful. Okay, and burnish the back. And I'm gonna do this, bring this here. Okay. See how it all just ends up being one piece? It's all good. Okay, now I'm going to off center and go to the bottom. And I think that looks beautiful. Final answer. Oh my goodness. I love this. So I'll probably put this on my dining room table. And again, vinyl's not food safe. I've said it a few times, but I want to make sure that you know. So pardon the repetition there, but if there was ever repetition about one thing, it's handy to remember that. So I won't be putting food on this, but I will be putting, you know, maybe a decorative candle or something fun like that for the middle of our dining table. So pretty. Or those little tiny Christmas trees, just anything super, super festive and fun. So now that we have put little pieces here and there of vinyl or of transfer tape, excuse me, it may come off in chunks. Oop, that one didn't. I pulled from the correct direction. If I would have gone from the other direction, it kind of would have peeled off in layers. So that's normal too. Do you do multiple ones? But isn't that cute? I love it. I love the alignment. I think it's pretty. I think it looks really nice in the bottom right just because of how this aligns and then the natural line here. And then I love kind of the slope and then the open white space here. That's so pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and finish our last craft, which we are going to make a little photo ornament. I think the heat press is all ready to go, so we should be all set. Okay, a little variety of supplies here. I have a couple pieces of butcher paper that I'm going to put on the bottom of my project, and I'll just let those magnetize down so they're nice and somewhat flat. So this is going to be a sublimation project. So I have some heat tape here. I also have my lint roller here, and I have a little picture of my girls. This was taken a while ago, but it's one of my favorites, and I really wanted to put it on our tree. So for sublimation, this is going to be a little bit of review if you are not new to sublimation, but I wanted to also give a little introductory for those who have not done sublimation before. So if doing a sublimation project, you are going to need a sublimation printer that uses sublimation ink. I also printed mine on sublimation paper, and I will link all of the materials that I prefer to use down in the description box below, including my butcher paper, the sublimation paper that I like, and my printer. Printer. I have an Indeed True sublimation printer. There are tutorials out there on how you can hack other printers to be sublimation printers. I actually invested in an actual true sublimation printer. It was important to me. It was just one of those things that if I was going to invest in it, I wanted to have a printer that was made to do the intended project, if that makes sense. So I have a sublimation printer that I love. It's one of my best purchases. And as another reminder, when doing a sublimation project, you want to use a blank that was made to be sublimated on. So these are sublimation ornaments. I will do my best to link them down in the description box below. If not, I'll try to link something similar, but I got them in quite a large pack and they're these nice circular sublimation ornaments. We're going to sublimate on this white side. Now I tried to see if there was any film over this to remove. On the ones that I have in front of me, there is not, but you wanna make sure that you double check that there isn't a protective layer to peel off. So make 
make sure that you double check to make sure there's no protective layer on there because you'll want to remove that. And usually it's just a film that you just peel off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my two layers of butcher paper. You probably could only do one, but I'm gonna do two just to be safe here. And then the sublimation blank, in this case, we have an ornament. I don't have my lint-free cloth with me. I don't know where it is. I'm sure when we do our major craft room demo that I am going to find it. But because I can't find it, I'm just going to use a lint roller. Now this actually is a very important step. You wanna make sure there's no lint on the surface of your ornament or whatever you're sublimating on. I'm gonna do that again, just in case there was any lint on my actual mat. I don't want to transfer it over to my ornament. Okay, so now, again, whoops, we have a sublimation ornament made to sublimate, not just any or ornament, not an ordinary ornament, sublimation ornament. We have our sublimation design. In this case, it is a photo. And again, printed with sublimation ink on sublimation paper. Now what we're going to do is we are just going to position this. Now it's kind of hard to do just because it's not transparent, right? But we're going to position this so that our design is where we want it on the ornament. So I'm just going to go this way just to kind of see if this is in the general area that I want. Now, a thing you should note is that when you print out your design or your photo, it's going to be very muted and it's going to look very desaturated. But once the heat is applied to your project, it's going to take on its true color. So don't worry if your print is, you know, very desaturated, very muted, it will take on its intended true color once the heat is applied. So I'm gonna take some heat tape because I like the placement, or at least I think I like the placement of my photo. So I want to use a tape just to help secure my project. So I'm gonna tape my ornament to my project. Now again, and I can do this because I've taped it now, we have our ink side facing the white side. So those are pressed against each other so that that ink will transfer over to our ornament, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do that face up on my butcher paper. Now the butcher paper underneath, its use and purpose is, do you see all this ink surrounding? And again, it's very faint and my photography style is very light and bright and airy anyway, so it's definitely light. But this is all ink that surrounds the ornament because I sized my design a little bit larger than the ornament just to make sure my placement was perfect. So if we don't have anything protecting underneath our project, that ink could get onto our heat press. So that's why we want to have two layers of butcher paper. You probably could do one, but I'm gonna do two because I adore my heat press and I don't want anything to happen during this project and I don't wanna transfer any ink to it. Okay, so we have two layers of butcher paper. We have our sublimation blank. In this case, it's an ornament. We have our sublimation print face down so that it's placed right on that white side. And then I'm going to use two additional pieces of butcher paper on the top. Again, for the same reason why I used it below to catch any ink that may come up, okay? We want to protect our heat press because if our heat press gets any sublimation ink on it, then the next time we go to use it, that residual ink can transfer to our next project. And it's it's not a good thing. I haven't done it yet, thank goodness, but it's because I'm definitely very careful and sometimes I use more than I need just to make sure because it makes me feel better. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the heat press. I have my heat press set at 385 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna try pressing this for a minute, but go ahead and use any time and temp that you find best for your project. I know some people have different time and temps that they prefer to use for sublimation and you may need to be doing some testing with your heat press, but that's what I'm gonna use for mine and we'll see how it turns out.
oh my goodness gracious it turned out so cute and you can see how it took on its true color once the heat was applied so isn't that so fun I love it and because I have such a big pack of them I will be making a lot of these for Christmas because I could do on my press probably six at a time so as long as I had all of my little photos printed out I could do so many in a minute <laughs> it's so so fun I love how those turned out so that is a very exciting project that I'm really excited that I got to do this year. I love everything that we did tonight. Everything turned out so pretty. I love this little wine glass. I think it is so fun. I am really loving this cookies for Santa tray. I think this is so fun as well. I think it's just really unique and pretty. It's also just classic and simple, which is definitely me. This was a little bit of a stinker, but again, since I'm just going to be placing it in our kitchen, it'll just be nuzzled all cozy in there as a piece of decor. It's going to be just fine. I'm not worried at all. I love the nice and naughty sign. I think that is so fun. I think the kids are going to think that's very, very cute and fun to play around with. And then I also love how this little candy cane sign turned out with the paint. I think it turned out super fun. I think it's really, really classic looking. Plus, I love that green color. Again, we brought that in again. Whoops the little puppy hair. We brought that again on this little ornament, which I think turned out really, really fun as well. Also, I can't help but think that these kind of look like sugar cookies with the sides unpainted. So placed on this little piece here, it kind of looks like cookies for Santa, right? I love this frame. I think it's so cute. I love just the magicalness of it. And I think this would be a really fun gift to give someone. So, so fun. This is gorgeous. I am so happy that I was able to finally bring this to life this year. I love the design. I think it's so pretty and I think it's very fitting on this tray. And the first craft that we did tonight, but rather large, was this really pretty sign. It turned out gorgeous. I love it. I just think everything turned out exactly how I hoped it would, even though some of the things were a little bit of a stinker or I made this because the original idea didn't quite pan out. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to let me know which was your favorite down below. Also, please let me know what you're crafting. I love hearing what everyone else is working on. Please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed bringing this together and creating all of this for you. I can't wait to see you next week in my huge video that's going to be me creating a bunch of gifts in my craft room. It's going to be amazing. Last year's video was so popular. I'll link it right up here in case you want to catch up on that or if you need something to watch in the week between this video and that next video. I can't wait to craft with you again. Please be sure to subscribe if you're brand new. That way you don't miss out on anything that I will be bringing to my craft table next. All right, everyone, I'll see you in the next video.